Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I've got somebody that's over in the western part of the world, the western part of the United States, anyways. His name is Nikolas. And the last name, I'm going to try this, see if I can get this. It's <laughs> Heinrichsen. That's pretty good. Not bad. How do you say it in your accent? Well, I would say Heinrichsen, so people understand. If I said it in German, it would be Heinrichsen. Heinrichsen. But that's how you break your throat. So Hendrickson, Heinrichsen, all of that works. It's the French, the ones that break that they strangle themselves when they talk. They would say something like Auricus or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have you here. This is fun. And I did read a little bit about uh, what you've got to offer. But before we do that, it's, I think it's always important to get to know who you are, what you do, okay. and then, you know, a little more about uh, sure, yeah. who is Nicholas. You married <laughs> yeah. and got kids? Uh, no kids yet. Oh, no, that's uh, like a guess, but leaving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, that's the way it works. And you're out in the San Francisco area. Correct, yeah. I'm in the middle of the city, very close to Lombard Street. That's the street that's really curvy um, yes. that you've seen and very touristy. Not so much lately. I mean, still curvy, not so touristy because people, people are at home. Um, they might be watching videos or photos of it on, on the internet. Sure, sure. How long have you lived out there? seven years in the city and then two years before that uh, I went to business school in Stanford. I, I'm from Germany originally, moved to the US in 2011, went to business school from 2011 to 2013. At business school I met my future business partner, his name is Chris, huge car enthusiast and then we started, a, think of Amazon for used cars, a car selling company. So we were selling used cars online, direct to consumer, raised like typical Typical quote unquote tech story. We raised $10 million in venture capital, um, built the company over four years, sold it to Carvana. That's the company with these vending machines. Right. Stayed, stayed there for three years and now we're starting another company. Isn't it fascinating? So, have you always been interested in technology since you were a kid? Yeah, technology more so than cars for sure. So, I always wanted to be an, an engineer when I grew up. I played a lot of Lego and thought I'd be like some sort of electrical or mechanical engineer. <laughs> But then by the time I graduated from high school, that was in 2002, um, like tech was really big. And, and so I, I was really, really curious to learn more about software, study computer science and software and, and computer science and finance and undergrad. Um, and then wanted to find a way in tech. And the best way I thought to do it is to, to just move to the Bay Area. You know, technology is, I'm like, I'm 63 and I, I grew up before the internet kind of thing yeah. came along, but it's always been fascinating that from what I understand, it's kind of like the binary system. Everything is done off of ones and zeros. So this that digital yeah. stuff that we can see right now, this is all generated from and a zeros. one and a zero. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> and then we're talking, I, I talk to people over on the other side of the planet, you know, 12 hour distance away. And still, it comes in crystal clear like this, and that's fascinating. Yeah, this is the, the, like it, it lends itself for conspiracy theories, right? <laughs> like it's almost incredible that you and I talk real time and you're like 3,000 miles towards east and then a little bit north. But the same is true. You can talk to people in Europe um, and you have like almost a perfect, perfect conversation I, I with used, a video. I used to talk with a guy over in the UK and sometimes, you know, when you send a message to him, you get that little ping and you can hear it on yeah. the other guy's, the other, other person's end. I yeah. would swear when I push send, I almost hear the ding before I push the button. I swear yeah. that fast. Yeah, it's crazy. So you're a technical person. How does it go that fast when it's, there's gotta be, I mean, I run into problems with my Wi-Fi speed. How come they can't make that work? But <laughs> yeah, well, it go so I'm, fast? I'm technical, but not that level of technical. Now, I think the way I think about it is there's actually two ways how like data travels. There's a lot of, fiberglass wires in the ground and so data travels with the speed of light that's very quick right very, very um, fast that's Amazing. the that's the part i understand but the part where the cell phone is the one that confuses me because you say something it goes in your phone it goes to a tower it goes to the next tower it comes back to me and so how does that how does that work like how can these microwaves travel so fast. I, I don't get it and I'm impressed. It's I not have exactly another right thing I, on that same exact topic. I want to share something, but and then I want to get more into what you yeah. app because I got some thoughts on that. But 
Deepak Chopra used to talk about all the different radio signals are in this one little teeny space. You just got to be able to tune into it because all the different radio stations, TV stations, fire, police, all the different vans, the different cell phones, every pager, every little radio thing is in the same spot. You just got to tune into it. That's a bizarre that all that information yeah, yeah, it's crazy. sit in a teeny tiny little hole. It's amazing. And it goes, it goes in waves and you can't see them and they go through walls and through bodies. Like it makes no sense, but uh, it does. <laughs> it works. <laughs> well, different than what I'm doing. That. It's a whole nother topic. We can get into the whole metaphysical stuff that we're just a bunch of ones and zeros, a hologram in this, you know, in the matrix. But I, I let's told talk. You it lends itself to conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a little about your program because your uh, your um, business, the new business. Yeah. So what it is, it's what happened to, in my opinion, when the internet came along, it kicked the middleman out of the world. It kind of like gave access true. to the wholesaler, the person, the customer could buy right from yeah. wholesale, and then Amazon jumped in, and then you mentioned your platforms kind of like an Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, so when, when we started selling used cars at a Stanford, we, we initially thought there must be a better way to sell your car. So for you to sell your car to somebody else who's interested in your vehicle, it's exactly what you said. We're removing the middleman. No transportation, no dealers that need to make money, no auctions in between, not another dealer. So just straight from you to somebody else. And so the, the tricky problem to solve there was more than anything, um, like, it's, Edu educating people because if you sell yeah. your car you always think it's worth more than it is and if you want to buy it you, you always think it has more problems than it really has and then making right. a deal happen is really difficult because you deal with two very emotional people um, both wanting the opposite from each other and so right. we moved away with that we worked with much more rational sellers wholesalers as you said so people who like leasing companies and rental companies who sell in bulk and they they're they're not emotional about the individual car. They just go by numbers. And if you go by numbers, the internet lends itself very much so to create, create efficiency gains because it's just data that you're presenting, right? Sure. Um, and so f our approach was find the cars that we can offer cheaper than anybody else through cutting out the middleman, go straight to the consumer, remove all the middleman, and then sell it directly to the con consumer. And so that worked really well. The, the problem we had is was, was, was unrelated to the core business. It was related to financing. If you want to sell cars as a, we were a virtual dealer, you need to be able to extend credit to your customers or work with lenders. Sure. And so lenders don't like signing up new dealerships because usually the dealers that are new, they have less, less experience, go out of business all the time. And so it's a huge risk for lenders. Instead, lenders only want to work with very, very experienced companies and car sellers that have been in the space for a long time. And as a result, we could only work with lenders in the very, very, very prime segment. So only credit scores above 700. Those are people who, who they just rarely default on their loans. They're, they're making their payments. Um, the bigger portion of the market, however, doesn't have perfect credit in the US. The bigger portion of the market has credit scores below 700. And what happens in that segment, that's where you as a borrower, you don't know what the right rate would be on your car. Instead, you somewhat, like you don't trust the dealer in the car, but all of a sudden you trust the dealer in the financial products. It's really, a, really, really, really unusual. Like it, I'm curious why that is, but that's what well, people- Well, I think uh, part of it is the car dealer, the, the car salesman's kind of got the, you know, okay, you're a sleaze ball, And then the, the financial person, they're intelligent because they're like a, in the money world. Uh, okay, so it's I think, the mean of the person that could be true. Um, as a result, what happens is you, most people, 80% of the people with a car loan get the loan at the dealership and all of these loans are marked up. So the dealer makes money on these loans. He's not going to give you the loan that pays you the lowest rate. He gives you the loan, the loan that pays him the highest referral fee. Right. So the day you drive, or the second you drive off the lot, you could refinance your auto loan and save money. And then, so that's what we learned. That was an insight we had. And then over time we realized a lot of people with a challenge credit make their payments. So if you have, let's say 600 credit, your rate is 15% or so on your car loan and you make your payments after six, 12 or 18 months, you move, you migrate in credit. So you would qualify for a much lower rate, but nobody, nobody knows you can refinance an auto loan. Um, only a few people do. And most banks don't like it because they're, they're shooting their, themselves in the foot. Sure. And so where we come in, where we create a digital experience where you can do it online in two minutes. Well, a lot of times it is that thing of, you know, if you, the things that you don't know, it could, it could work against you. You've got to kind of yeah. 
understand. Yep. That's true. So you're sort of, like you said, you're sort of educating the people, but you got this platform that they can utilize to do all the crazy stuff that exactly the computing and all that. Exactly. It's, it's in our case, the computing part is where we calculate what interest rate you should qualify for. But in reality, we're just moving data around. We're taking your data, make it really easy for you to provide your information. We'll pull up your credit history. It's a soft pull. That means sure. we won't impact your credit. And obviously, we won't do it without your consent. We pull up your motor vehicle record so we can see which vehicles are registry name. And so instead of having for you to enter everything or filling out a form, it's all pre-populated. You give, in, you give us one data point, click OK, consent, 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 and we'll show you here's everything we know about you, and here's what your rate could be and your savings could be. Well, that's brilliant because <laughs> usually when you see all this stuff, there's a lot of data that they need, and you start putting it all in there, and your brain just gets overwhelmed with all this data, and all you really need to know is how much is it and when you're going to get it to me. Yeah. It's kind of all you really need to know. Less is more. Less is more. <laughs> totally. And you take all that because you do have to have that stuff to come up with. You, those need, it. you need it. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't estimate what, uh, what the rate would be. It's funny. We, we talked about San Francisco earlier. Mark Twain spent a lot of time in San Francisco. He said two fun things. He said the coldest, win the, the coldest winter he ever experienced was in San Francisco. <laughs> and so that's, that's, that was the summer in San Francisco, he said, because uh, it's really foggy. And the other thing Mark Twain said is, sorry, I wrote you a long letter because I didn't have the time to write you a short one. And so what, he's, what that suggests, it's really hard to make experiences really easy. Yeah. Like it's just really hard. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. Well, I, I can see how there's a lot of non-relevant data to the end user that they don't really need that. Like I said, they just want to know how much it is and I mean, if you can they deliver just, it. They just want to know how much is my new loan going to be and how much am I going to save? That's cool. Now, is this an, an app on your phone or is this a computer a program or page? Yeah, good question. So the, the decision on whether or not it's a website or an app depends heavily in these businesses on where the customers are coming from. And so in our case, we, we have two segments of the population. One segment knows that you can refinance. Small, it's just 5% of the people. Another segment doesn't know you can refinance. And so if we look at the segment that knows you can refinance, that's more than a million people searching every month on Google. And so if you search, you read an article, you click on a link, the easiest way to, to help you get into the process is through a website. So we don't have to force you to download an app. The app becomes, later, becomes interesting later on when we tell you, hey, so you just saved $1,000 in your loan. Do you want us to monitor where you can save uh, on, on any other auto expenses down the road? And so we, we help you with the refinance on the website, but then we'll create an experience where you, if you have an app, very similar to Credit Karma, we'll ping you hey, today is a good day to check your insurance. I think you can qualify for a lower rate. Or, hey, today is a good day to cancel your warranty because you have fulfilled certain criteria. And so that's the idea. Does that make sense? It, it does, but I was just wondering, does it also apply to some of the other things that the person has to buy, like tires and oil changes and things like that? Yeah, so the, the vision, the long-term vision is to be the app on your phone for everything car-related. And so that includes maintenance, that includes finding out where you can get your oil service done. It tells you, hey, here's a recall. You can bring the car to the dealership. They'll reset something. It also tells you, hey, now's a great time to sell your car. Prices are up. Uh, you just have positive equity in your car, so you'll, you'll get a lot of money for the car. And we can put you in a much better vehicle at the same monthly rate. So it's all around car ownership. So does something like this have like an affiliate program to it or could someone use this as a middle person and like start buying and selling cars and use the app to their advantage? And yeah, so the refinance part, that's where we just send, uh, save you money. But there, there our interests are very much aligned. So I want that for you. When we, when we help you find cars, I'm sure, like, I'm sure we can uh, introduce discount codes or coupon codes so people who refer customers can save. Because uh, that's ultimately how you create virality and everybody should, should get a piece of the cake. Um, sure. And so we'll introduce that too. Very cool. Well, why don't you let us know how we can get a hold of you, like yeah. the, the website domain and all that kind of thing. This is pretty interesting. I, I love seeing this new technology. I mean, it's pretty fascinating how like the Uber and the Lyft came in and they're yeah. not a car company. They're just, a, they're just an app. Yeah. Software <laughs> is eating the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do we uh, get a hold of you? So the name of the company is Clutch. Uh, the website is withclutch.com, W-I-T-H-C-L-U-T-C-H.com. Um, 
it'll be very easy for you to submit a few details and, and get a firm credit offer, refinance offer in two minutes. Alternatively, if you want to get in touch with me, just, just find me on LinkedIn. My name is Nicholas Hendrickson, as you almost correctly said at the beginning. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'd love to hear from people. Like I want, I want to hear what people are up to, what, what businesses they're building, if I can help, if they need capital, maybe I can help with that too. Uh, or if they have feedback, like I love feedback. Feedback is a gift. And so yeah. I can and are you on some of the other social media like Twitter and Periscope and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff? L LinkedIn is the best channel to reach me. That's where I'm most active. Twitter is just a lot of people tweeting quite literally. And so I feel like there's a lot of noise <laughs> quite literally. Um, LinkedIn is where, where I feel like uh, we actually exchange useful information. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Facebook's the place to argue and Right now, I'm really focused on YouTube, trying to get the visual aspect of things up. So That's how we humans function. Well, if you want to stay on, we can have another little chat after. But other than sure. that, I'm going to close this off and beam it up to the universe, and we'll see who can find it and put Let's those little keywords and hashtags in there. Nicholas, I appreciate you taking the time today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate too. it, too. Peace.